Oh, welcome back once again. In this part, we are gonna learn how to implement this back to top scroll features and this custom horizontal scroll view. If I click on it, so I, we are in the top section. So when we have a lot of section in one page, then it's better to show this kind of back to top feature so that user don't need to scroll it again, okay? So just click on it in the top. And when we're in the top, this button is disabled. As soon as we scroll, it's gonna appear here, okay? So for that, I'm gonna install a package called React Scroll to Top. So just search on Google, npm React Scroll to Top, and then make sure that you are in this npm package. And I'm gonna install this one. So I'm gonna copy this one. And here, I'm gonna install the package. So the folder directory is going to be this, and then I'm gonna put it here. So now I'm gonna install this one. So I'm I always use this force because sometimes because of the conflict of the different version, it cannot install. It will tell you to use the force. So instead of wasting time, I just use this force so that it can install at any cost. Okay, and it has installed. Now I'm gonna import this one in our app.js file because this app.js file is gonna contain everything here. So first, let's read their documentation what they have. Okay. So they said that we need to install this one that we already did and they said that we need to import this one so let's in, import this one in our app.js and i'm gonna import this one now they said a little bit of instruction here how we use it we use this one then it's gonna appear here and they have a couple of props here like smooth is a boolean whether to use smooth scrolling or not by default it's false okay oh uh, by default is false top number height after page scroll to visible 20 by default is uh, 20 so you can just call this one and then put the number it means that like when you want to show on the button here so you can just define the height here and then the color if you want to change the icon color the path white height they have a couple of options okay so let's add this one so I'm gonna copy this one and after all of this component, I'm gonna just put it here. Let's see what we have. So now we, you can see we don't have this button here. And we, I, I scroll, and then this button is gonna appear. We're gonna change it, don't worry. So now if I click on this, I'm in the top section. How cool it is, okay? It's very easy to use. Now I'm gonna add this kind of custom design, okay? For that, what I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna just change the color and background color. So I'm gonna use this color Okay, first let's put the style that we can always use So it's gonna take our props called style here. We can change our background color. So style and inside this style I'm gonna put Border radius so border So I'm gonna put border radius is going to be 90 pixel and then I'm gonna add background color. So background color is going to be, I'm gonna choose the color code that I used. So hash and then 3800, 3800, then 4C. Now let's see what we have. We scroll and we have this round shape but our icon is not visible and the reason is that we need to change the icon color here it says that the SBC icon fill color by default is black okay so I'm gonna copy this color and I'm gonna change the color code so here color I'm gonna put it white color and here you go we can see this color is white now and then uh, we can also define the height and white okay it's quite big so i'm gonna define height and white so i'm gonna say height height is going to be 20 and then the white is going to be 20. now we have this shape it looks really nice now okay now they said that this is smooth set tech boolean and by default it's false i don't know if i put it true what will happen I'm a bit curious to see it. Let's put it true and let's see what we have. Now, 
we are here this is our um, button now click on it what's the difference I couldn't understand any difference here or it has some kind of animation I think yeah it added some kind of animation effect let's try again um, from, for me it's not visible what they mean by this boolean okay it the speed is a bit high I think maybe we can just try this one and then they have another one that I wanted to show you like the top okay they said that height after page scroll by default is 20 let's try this one so the top here so the top and I'm gonna put here maybe six 600 okay so that we don't see it easily so now previously it was available here at this position I guess now if I scroll down and scroll down now it's appear here so this way if you want to show show your back to top button after a certain position then you can just define it and then it's gonna be visible here and it's gonna work this way cool so I don't want to have this one like we can just by default it's 20 I can also keep it 20 or if, if it doesn't matter if you change it okay I'm, I just wanted to show you because in many cases maybe you need to show it after 500 pixels 600 pixel in that case you can just use this property and then you can just use it all right so now let's change this um, this uh, scroll bar color okay for this scroll bar we don't need to install any packages scroll bar itself has some pre-built class that we are gonna change we are not gonna change the class so in this app.js uh, I think this app.js is not connected with our app.js is not connected with our app.js so first connect this one so import here app.css now I'm gonna remove all this code we don't need any of this code here and here we need to add the CSS property to change the to change our to change our scroll bar so it has a scroll bar called a uh, web kit scroll bar so web kit web kit uh, web kit scroll bar so web kit scroll bar and then here I'm gonna define the white so I'm gonna define the white let's say white is going to be 8 pixel and the height is going to uh, the auto here so now this is our project now we don't have this scroll bar here anymore we do have but it's not visible now so we we, we did some changes here now we need to change the color so web kit scroll bar then with scroll bar track they have another class them called web kit web kit scroll bar scroll bar track okay web kit scroll bar track and i'm gonna use here we need to add this uh this shadow uh the box shadow okay the track box shadow what i mean by this like you can see this box shadow little shadow here and then on top of this we have this one okay so this shadow for this shadow we need to use this shadow web kit scroll bar track i'm gonna use a box shadow here so i'm gonna give it box shadow type inset and then i'm gonna add the box shadow 0 0 and then the 5 pixel and then the 5 pixel 0 0 5 pixel rgb color and then actually sorry and then 103 and then 100 and a 10 109 and then we can see this uh, this track okay this little shadow color here so now we need to put another class name so now we need to put the thumb so this one called is thumb like this color is called the thumb okay so the web kit a web kit scroll bar web kit scroll bar thumb and in this thumb we need to put our background color so i'm gonna choose the background color and the color code is going to be hash uh, ff 854c and then i'm gonna choose border radius is going to be 
5 pixel so now here you go we can see this border radius I mean this is scroll bar thumb okay now we need to add a hover effect when we hover this thumb for example this you hover so that you can not so the user can understand that it's selected okay this so now we have this track we have this thumb and now we can add this hover of this thumb okay so we can just look the same way we have we use the hover effect so just need to put the hover and then here and just put the background color so background color I'm gonna put here I'm gonna put here 720 720PA9 and here you go now we do have this hover effect all right so you have learned how to mm, how, how to implement this hover effect okay and how to add this custom custom design we can maybe we can use this color I really like this color for the thumb so I'm gonna pick this color and let's try how it looks so for the thumb instead of this color I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put this color okay so it looks nice okay this one cool so our uh, back to top button is working and our thumb is working all right so you have learned how to implement this custom scroll bar and back to top functionalities i'm gonna stop this video right here and we will continue from next lecture oh welcome back once again so far we have designed um almost all the component okay so we have this work experience take a stock education project testimonial contact and our everything right we also added these things now this navbar is not doing anything right so we need to add our smooth scrolling functionality so that when i click on it about we can see about click on work experience we can see work experience for example like if i'm going to click on home so i'm in the home section i'm going to click on tag stack i'm in tag stack section click on the project i'm in the project section so these are the functionalities that uh, we're going to implement so for that we're going to use so we can do it in many ways like there are a couple of other options using id or anything but it would be nice if we use a package called react scroll and then we get this kind of smooth scrolling okay so the package name is react scroll just search on google and pm react scroll and it's very easy to use i'm going to show you how to do it and they have a couple of information here so first i'm going to install it so i'm going to copy this package name here and then i'm going to install it so cd client and then i'm gonna put this one and it will install don't worry about it and what it says here so we need to install this one we can read their documentation and we need to import this uh, so they have the documentation how we use it like we need to call this link and then these are the props that they have we can pass okay these are the props that they have here so like this link and this is how we can do it so so we can import the link from react scroll i think it's installed already all right so now i'm gonna open i'm gonna open our sidebar this sidebar and inside this sidebar list we have all of our item right so we have all of our option here in the sidebar and we need to add our link here our react scroll here so first i'm gonna import our react scroll i'm gonna say import we can say link from react scroll not real scroll to top it calls react scroll that that we just enrolled okay this react scroll package you can also import it from here i think yeah like this link okay it's from our react scroll okay now we need to connect this link so now this link i'm gonna wrap this wrap our this component not the ally but this one our icon and text for the expanded for the expanded uh, sidebar we will do it for the only the icon so i'm gonna add this link and now 
put this information our title and the icon inside the link now inside our link we have our this information our title name our sidebar item name and then the icon that we have here okay now it takes couple of props this link the first one it takes is to two means where we want to go when user will click on this one we want to show we want to um, we want to go to the home section and in the home section open this home in the home section we need to give a id here that we didn't add here right so in the home section in the so remember that you always always need to assign the id on the main div so this div contain our entire code therefore i'm gonna give id over here and i'm gonna say home here now this home we need to call so i'm gonna copy this home and in this top in this two i'm gonna put this home so now it knows that we are targeting this section okay so now let's save it and now let's just scroll down and if i click on the home here you go i am in the home section click on this education it is not gonna scroll because we haven't added anything for this education click on the home okay so scroll click on the home we're in the home section okay but still we need to add a couple of props here so that we get the animation feature so in this link after this two there is a property called a spy so this is spy is a boolean i'm gonna give it true okay so what does this spy do we can read the documentation here they have a couple of props and this is spy make link selected when a scroll is at its targeted position okay so we need to give the span spy true to link selected make link selected when scroll is at its targeted position like this kind of select option for example now we're in the work experience section so this one is selected we will, we will also implement these things in a moment all right so put it as uh, spy true and then after that um this is spy and then i want to have they have another called smooth where is it so duration onset um offset duration where is it um let me see they have something here called smooth here you go so this is smooth is true we need to put this smooth so that we get a uh, smooth animation so i'm gonna put this smooth here true and after that um we can also set the duration for example for how long we want to we can say the duration props will help us to set time of the scroll animation can be a number or, or a function okay that allows more granular control at runtime so i'm gonna define the duration here as well so this way you can try different kind of option here so i'm gonna put duration uh here i'm gonna say duration let's say 100 okay then they have another one called uh, something called offset this one is called additional pixel like pairing so if you want to have like for example that uh, additional pixel means like for here uh, you can see that this in this one this one this uh, home section is only has maybe 500 600 pixel but it still is going to show these things okay so if it is selected then the icon color has changed so we need to fix it so this offset i'm gonna choose to scroll additional so this offset i'm gonna say offset is equal to minus 100 all right it will be the in the negative option scroll additional pixel and refresh it in the home now click on the home and home is selected everything is fine now we need to remove this uh this one okay so how we do this one okay so let's put one more option here so let me explain you again if you in case you didn't understand it so we just wrap our uh, our text and icon with this link and we are passing this to this two we need to mm, add to target our id of our section of our component for this one home component we need to define id and then put the id and these are the properties for the animation for the smooth scrolling through duration and the offset it will generate uh, extra pixels okay put it minus 100 now this way we will have to do it for every 
component let's do it for about so I'm gonna copy this link from top put it here and copy this link and put it here and now I need to change the home uh, uh, to here so open the about and let's assign an ID to this about like this one so I'm gonna give it an ID called about and in this about now copy this about ID and then I'm gonna paste this about ID here okay so now we have this about we have this home and this about we can scroll now first let's change this active class name so if you look at here these are the ally that contains our whole things our link our everything right so and the class name is nav item so I'm gonna copy this nav item and open this uh, sidebar where is it so sidebar list.js so here I'm gonna put nav item space dot active so when our this nav item active we want to um we want to show what we want to show we want to show we want to show border uh, we want to show border left so border left is going to be two pixel two pixel solid yellow two pixel solid yellow and color also I'm gonna choose yellow let's see if it is working or not so we're in the about section we got this border and the color we're in the home section we got this one okay but we need to remove this underline this is not actually underline this is coming from the text decoration that we do have so navbar ul ally navbar ul ally so let's put text decoration none here so text decoration none it should gone now no it didn't remove from here so this navbar ul ally uh, navbar items ul so navbar items okay so we need to put this navbar item so where is the navbar item uh, do you have anything here no we don't have so let's put this class name separately here so nav item nav item we can say ul so nav item li not ul li and then i'm gonna say text decoration none it should work now no it didn't um it didn't work actually so maybe we can put this thing um on the top so never items so nav bar items so there is a class that we decided we added here so nav bar items okay so uh, we can do it in this way uh nav bar items because this link by default contain our a tag okay that we can't see so instead of this nav item so i'm gonna just put it here nav bar items and here we can say ul and then ally and then and then and then a okay because this this text decoration mainly comes from the a and as we wrapped it with this a uh, link and this link by default like i mean inside the background uh, it has it contain a a to link this one that we can't see they replaced it using this link in this or uh, using this package okay that they build actually so as soon as we wrap this one we were actually getting the a tag un underscore okay now you can see this this underline has gone here because we added this one this one Nebbar items you will ally Nebbar items you will ally a text decoration none okay everything is fine here now we can see in the about section this way we're gonna connect our every item so now let's give it a class name for for our what for our work package next we have work package work experience right next we have work experience okay we need to fix few things here like we need to organize our items in our app.js based on the list so first we have home then about then work experience home about work experience like the, the way we have it here i want to show it in this way so about work experience and then take a stack work experience then take a stack okay um 
our work experience we need to put first after this about okay otherwise it will, it, it, it will not be able to uh, render it sequentially okay after the about put this work experience in the app.js and then take a stack and then then i think after take a stack what we have here work experience so here take a stack and then education after this education we have this project okay so take a stack and then cut this one education here and then the project and then testimonial and then the contact okay so sidebar about work experience like follow this sequence so first we have home then about work experience take a stack education so home about work experience and then we have our take a stack then we have our education then we have our project then we have testimony and contact so it cannot be it won't be able to scroll it properly if you are not adding the same sequence here there's a reason that i am just rearranging the way i want to show you in our sidebar okay nothing serious here now let's give it give it an id to our work experience so open this work experience and in this work experience this is the div that contains everything so i'm going to give it an id so id is going to be work experience so now we need to add this design like this link in our work experience also so i'm gonna just wrap this link with this work experience and copy this link and here you go so this is our work experience and here we go so this work experience is connected and now what else we have so this work experience is now connected okay now we need to open our tech stack so for the tech stack i'm gonna copy this one the link and in just wrap this one here now sorry uh this link and then uh put this one here so now give it a name uh, open this tech stack in this tech stack this con I div contain everything so i'm gonna give it a name i'm gonna say tech stack id is going to be tech stack copy this id and put it here tech stack here you go so now tech stack now we are in tech stack okay so even if i scroll it's gonna automatically select okay as soon as it gets this this section id it's gonna automatically select and then this is the home cool so now take stack is done and let's put id for uh um, take a stack and then the, and then i didn't we need to put for education right so we have this education here so i'm gonna copy this link here and then put this one for this education and copy this link here and now give a id to the education section so this is the container and i'm gonna give it a name i'm gonna say education and this education will contain everything here and after that we have our project i'm gonna copy this project so nav item is going to be project and then i'm gonna copy this one all right so now we need to add this project so uh give it a name so in this section not the project list like this is the main container so this container and i'm gonna give it a name id is going to be here project and give it a name to project and then we do have testimonial and then in this testimonial i'm gonna put this link and here we go we do have a testimonial and give it a name in the id in the main container so the id is going to be here testimonial and copy this id and put it here after that we do have another link here so this is the link and then copy this link and this one is going to be for contact so open this contact form 
and we can assign an ID here and this container so ID is going to be contact and here it goes so I think we have added everything here now let's try let's just scroll from the top so in the home then about work experience take a stock take a stock then the education project is going to select it testimonial is going to select it and then the contact okay so for some reason contact is not working contact okay did I add any ID here contact and then this contact right contact it should work but it's not working uh, okay the reason is that about the height that we have added for this contact and the height of the testimonial so we, I'm gonna decrease the height of testimonial so open this testimonial and instead of height 80 VAs just let's give it 60 VAs okay now I think our contact should work but it still is not working uh, let's put it 40 okay it's not about this one so let's put it back 70 vertical height and I think we need to increase the height of this contact form so open this height because when we are here it still is taking a little height of this one or what could be the reason here let me refresh it it should work right not about the height okay so I think there we did something wrong here so contact ally contact right so contact dot js contact and I can say let's give it ID is equal to contact let's give it a con different name contact section sometimes for the name it cannot um, call this ID nef item contact section but it's working and it's very strange okay so let's change the uh, height of this one so the contact from height is let's put it 950 pixel and click on the contact it's working now okay so now it's working so the issue was that the height because it couldn't take this section height because it was taking this one so project and then the testimonial and then we have this contact form so we can uh, decrease the height now a little bit less 750 I think still it will work okay so it's not able to take this one here it's not able to mark this one let's put it back to 800 pixel and then we have the about this work experience is working but the problem is only with this one so I think if I remove this one it should work so let's remove this offset no it's not gonna affect here so I'm gonna I'm gonna increase the height here let's put it 850 yeah now it's working now it, it can take the height of this one all right so now if I am in the small size like the small sidebar like only icon sidebar then we don't have this one because we haven't added anything like the ID we didn't add here right so therefore we are not having these issues okay we are having these issues here so what I, what I will do we will add it uh, we can do it in this way we can simply we can quickly add this functionalities because if you look at here that we have this for ally we have the same class name nav item and for the icon we also have the same class name called nav item okay I mean for for the mobile is for the icon nav bar so what I'm gonna do instead of this evil ally I'm gonna just copy this evil ally from here and then I will just remove this one 
okay because we need the same thing so i'm gonna copy this evil ally i'm gonna copy this one and i'm gonna remove this evil ally from here let me check it again okay so remove this one and then put it here okay now what i will do simply what i will do now here i will just remove this name here because we only need the icon and we at the same time we need this id because we need same id and then remove the about remove the text here and remove it remove this education text project testimonial and then the contact now let's save it format the code now let's see what we have now okay you can see this our icon is selected i mean the testimonial section icon is selected click on it everything is working perfectly so it was a very quick solution because we need same selector same id cool and if i open it then it's selected it's selected this one is selected this one is selected all right so you have learned how to do it and this one is fully functional everything is fine everything is responsive here you can see uh, even as soon as i even i scroll it's gonna automatically select it so you have learned finally how to do it it's very basic very easy there is nothing uh, complex so just wrap our item uh, with the link and then pass this couple of props and this two is the main thing that connect our uh, section using the id and these are the for the animation and just put it icon here only for the icon option and we have as we have the same name nef item and here we are saying nef item uh, nef item dot active the design like the active class that we are getting here so it's gonna work for our uh, expander sidebar or only icon sidebar okay cool so i'm gonna stop this video right here and we will continue from next lecture welcome back once again in this part we will try to add our mobile view side neighbor for example if i am in the mobile view then we have this kind of nav bar okay and our this sidebar is gone okay so this kind of things so for that first we need to hide our this side nav bar as soon as we are in the mobile view okay so how we do it we're gonna use media query for this one all right so this is the sidebar and this sidebar here and this is the class name so this sidebar is going to contain our sidebar list and then our everything here right this uh, this one and this icon also so we're gonna disable this sidebar as soon as we're in the mobile view so open this sidebar.css and at the bottom i'm gonna add a media query for this one so how we write media query to write media query if in case you don't know what is media query so we use media query to make it responsive okay to show something in mobile view and we can also fix the uh, screen size and then we can customize our design okay so i'm gonna add media and here i'm gonna say max width so max width okay so media max width and i'm gonna colon let's say 100 pixel okay so max with 100 pixel if max with maximum width 0 to 100 pixel so it will start count from 0 to 100 pixel maximum white then what we are saying that if our maximum white is 0 to 100 pixel i mean it means that anything less than 100 pixel we are gonna um, disable this sidebar okay so anything not 100 like 1000 pixel so our class name is sidebar that contains everything for this uh, sidebar list that contain our menu bar item so i'm gonna say dot sidebar and here i'm gonna say uh, display none cool now we are in a uh, large screen still we have our menu bar, sorry uh, here this one so we have our menu bar item in our large screen everything's working fine now let's move on to the mobile view as soon as i'm in the mobile view you can see that we don't have our we don't have our menu sidebar previously we had this one okay but still we need to fix few things we will solve it later don't worry but before that i want to have this thing like this new sidebar the new snap bar in mobile view okay how we add this one all right so everything is working here fine 
and for that so now you have learned how can you hide based on the screen size okay now i want to have another another uh option another file here called navbar mobile view we can say navbar mobile view dot js we will need also a css file for this one so i'm gonna create the function here and then create our css file for the mobile view so dot css now we need to put this mobile view css in this navbar mobile view so import this one dot css now we need to connect this navbar mobile view to our app.js the way we connect our component so here i'm gonna import navbar mobile view and i'm gonna put it just after the sidebar cool everything is fine here now let's add the design for this navbar mobile view so for the mobile view what we we will have mainly we will have uh, we will have this this one we can call it header and then when user click on it uh, we show these things okay so i'm gonna define here a class name first so i'm gonna say class name and this time i'm gonna say container fluid because we need our header for entire screen and then okay so uh First, we can wrap this one with a uh, ID uh, with a uh, with a with a different class name. First, we can call it mobile view uh, mobile view nav bar. Okay, mobile view nav bar. And inside this, I'm gonna have a div, and this div will contain our nav bar header. Okay, so let's put it here. So class name I'm gonna say navbar header. Okay, so it's going to be navbar header, and inside this navbar header, I want to have a p tag, and inside this p tag, I want to have uh, one icon which is called the hamburger icon. So I'm gonna take it from React icons. So React icons. So go to this React icons, and I'm gonna search hamburger icon. So this one I'm gonna copy and put it here and we need to import this uh, file so I'm gonna copy this import from here and then connect this one put it here and I'm gonna add ZI so this one I'm gonna put here and let's give it a size so I'm gonna say size is going to be 25 for now. Now in our React application, what can we see here? We can't see anything here right now. Let's give it a design first. So first I'm gonna design this navbar header here. So copy this navbar header and navbar header here. And here I'm gonna add the height and white for this navbar header. So I'm gonna say white, white is going to be 100%. And after that, I'm gonna give it a background color. So background color for now, just select brown, we will change this color. And then I'm gonna say color is going to be white color. And, and let's see what we have now. So now here we go. We can see this design is appearing from here. And the reason is that we didn't hide this one from our web view. In the mobile view, we will be able to see it like this after this one, okay? But we should put it on the top. Uh, okay, so let me check this one. So mobile view. Okay, it, I think it's okay here. But here, now we need to hide this nav bar when we are in a web view okay because in the web view we don't want to show this one so how we do it the same way we did so we need to just copy this media query here i'm gonna copy this media query and put it here and here so this time 
I am gonna say that if minimum weight is then if instead of max if minimum weight this time if minimum weight if minimum weight is this uh, 100 pixel we will minus it then we want to hide this one so this one is going to contain our everything so i'm going to just contain, copy the main class name so instead of sidebar this one we can say display nine display none if minimum white 1000 pixel then display none okay now we don't have any display here now i am in the mobile view then is we still have this option okay i think we can uh, rearrange this component we need to put this sidebar Uh, we can put it on top of the sidebar because our home contain inside the sidebar so we need to put this one on the top so that in the mobile view it, it comes from the top now show it now we can see we have this option here cool so we will fix it in a moment so now uh, what we have here now we can do a little bit of design stuff here so how we do it so now we know how can we show and hide so I'm gonna add uh, for the icon so we need to add the icon design I want to have little margin from from this side for this icon and we can also def we can also give it a height for this header I think um, so this navbar header and let's give it a height we can say height is going to be uh, 100 pixel maybe okay we will uh, I think it's not gonna work here so if I refresh it sometimes the mobile version cannot uh, take it I cannot uh, update it okay it's working so we don't need to have 100 pixel uh, 100 pixel is used so instead of 100 pixel i want i'm gonna select 30 pixel again it cannot uh, reload in mobile view okay so uh, we will fix it okay so just remove the height now keep it auto and we will fix it later so now nav header so nav header p and then this svg because the icon is a svg icon so here uh, we can say that so we can say um, uh, we can say margin left so margin left is going to be 10 pixel and then I want to have cursor pointer here so cursor pointer after that um, cursor pointer and now what we have here so there's a few problem here So now we have this thing okay now it's, it's, it's in a good shape uh, we will fix it now as soon as I scroll it you can see that our uh, this menu bar is not uh, not fixed okay so we need to fix this menu bar so how we do it to do so we need to call this one because this nav bar mobile view nav bar and this one contain our entire design so on top I'm gonna write this one so we're gonna say in this class and here I'm gonna give this position to sticky and then I'm gonna add align items um, we don't need to have align items I'm gonna have uh, top zero and then I'm gonna add jet index so jet index is going to be one because uh, if in case you don't know how this Z index work, work Z index means uh, it can place our D for any item um, one after another. For example, um, this one. Let me show. For example, um, the. Okay, so for example, let let it comes. So for example, this one is our D, and if I want to put another item on top of this one, then I can say Z index one, 
and on, on the bottom the item we have here black color it will be jet index minus one so if you want to put one item on top of another one in that case we put jet index okay so for example here now we have we can see that this one is fixed okay so here how it is working all of this data in our application is in jet index minus and here we said for this maneuver we said in jet index one there's a reason that it can stay on top of every item for example now about for example you can see this one for this one we have these options so this is sticky means it can also stick this way but we can also make it fixed here like sticky means it will go and then you can just see this one is fixed I hope that you got the point how what does this uh, jet index do for us jet index means we want to put one item on top of another one let's assume that all this design you can see this uh, this design this and this tech stack everything is jet index minus one and here we say that jet index one so this navbar will always be on top of all this implement of our application okay this is how we can see that everything is going beyond this one uh, all right so now uh, we can do one thing so instead of sticky fix inst instead of this uh, where it is uh, like sticky we can just say fixed and then it is gonna look this let me show so now uh, okay those, those the fixed is not gonna work here we need to put the white here so let's uh, keep it uh, sticky here Keep it sticky and we can define oh we can we can define the height here or maybe we can define padding here so the header it's contain this thing I'm gonna add padding here so padding 10 pixel for this header and let me open it again and you can see this option now we can see this menu bar and everything is fine so instead of uh, padding 10 pixel I'm gonna put padding 5 pixel here now I can see this and here you go I can see this padding 5 and we can also have little bit margin from top for this icon I'm gonna say margin top 10 pixel now we have this one in center now everything is fine now we need to define our state and we need to say if we click on it we want to show this kind of thing okay and if we click outside then it's gonna do this thing so we can do the same thing we already have the design okay so we will do it in our next part see you in the next lecture welcome back once again in this part we will try to add our menu item for our mobile view so when you click on it we are gonna show them this list okay so how we do it so it's very easy to do it it's nothing to worry so in this nav for mobile view this is our header and after this header i'm gonna have i am gonna have another div here okay and this div is gonna contain our everything i'm gonna call it class name i'm gonna say mobile nav okay and what we have here like like this so we have this icon and then the title okay so we already have this kind of design in our uh, in our mobile web view like the same design that we have here for example like this design I'm talking about okay that we have so we can just uh, copy this one from our nav list so which one we need to copy we need to copy icon and name this one so I'm gonna copy this evil and ally copy this thing and then put it here and then it is going to give us an error because we need to import our link here also need to import the icon here all the icons so I'm going to import from here I'm going to import this link and all the icon so just import copy this from here and then put it in the mobile nav bar now we should be able to see something here but it cannot load it so I'm gonna inspect and here you go we can see all of this item I scroll then it's gonna you can see that it's selected but we need to add we need to change the design for this one I mean the nav but design and or what can we do alternatively I think we can also put this class name 
which is going to be nav per items so let me put this class name here and instead of mobile nav if we put this name then I think it's gonna work we will be able to see these things okay but we need to add the CSS for this one so I'm gonna uh, remove this one I'm gonna keep this mobile nav name and then I'm gonna give uh, this one this class name I'm gonna change okay instead of nav item I'm gonna give it a nav item mobile view okay so I'm gonna give this class name for mobile view to each and every ally okay instead of nav item I'm gonna give this one just copy this one and paste it here and then nav item paste this one and then this one also and here you go this nav item and this nav item okay so now let's add the CSS so first we need to add our CSS for this mobile nav class because this class is gonna con this this is gonna hold everything okay so I'm gonna copy this one and then I'm gonna add the CSS design here right here so it will take one background color so I'm gonna define the height so height is going to be auto I'm not gonna give it any specific height I want to define the white I'm gonna say white 210 pixel and then I'm gonna have background color here so background color I'm gonna choose so choose this background color for now we will change it if it is required and then I give it background color and then let's see what we have now now in the mobile view we have this kind of design now I want to have little margin margin top 10 pixel so margin top 10 pixel now after this uh, mobile nav we need to add mobile nav ul li because inside this mobile nav we have this ul and then li okay so i'm gonna add mobile nav then ul then li and here i'm gonna add the design let's change the color to white so color is going to be white color and then list style type list style type none and then i'm gonna add cursor pointer and then what do we need what else we need we need to have here text decoration so text decoration none now we should see some good design here now in inspect and this is still loading sometimes it cannot uh, render it so now inspect and we have this design now okay but we need to remove this one so what can we do in the same way we can like the way we did it um we can say mobile nav ul ally and then it should be like we need to define another class so mobile view mobile nav ul ally a and then put this text decoration here as well because this text decoration comes from this a tag okay now if i do it now you can see this color has gone and now we can change the color we can also put the color here like put the color here to white now this nav per item is here we're gonna add the active class so this nav per item this nav per item and then here I'm gonna say this nav per item space dot active if it is active then we are gonna show color black then I'm gonna say text decoration none I think we don't need to have this one here and then a background color I'm gonna choose background color background color I'm gonna choose uh, C to D six double one and this color and put border radius so border radius is going to be 90 pixel and padding is going to be 5 pixel 
and then a white I'm gonna choose 100% cool so now okay let it refresh first now if I am in the mobile view then we have this design okay in this home we are in the work experience take a stock okay and it's working but it look really bad so um, we need to have margin here okay so for mobile nav you will ally let's put margin top so margin top 30 pixels so that we can get little margin from the top items now here we go now we have this margin now it looks good perfect and this margin I, I want to decrease so this margin is coming from mobile nav margin top 10 pixel rather I'm gonna give it margin top 5 pixel so now if I come here and then we can see this 5 pixel this margin is coming from here or which part mobile nav margin top so nav header mobile nav header yeah it's coming from here so this 5 pixel is okay or if I remove this one I think I don't think it's working here let's see if I remove it what happened so it's not coming from here it's coming from somewhere else so we need to fix it and let me try all right so where I have added this one number header so let me see the class name oh, okay so not mobile nav so this is the mobile nav that we have so y to fix pixel okay so this margin top is, is taking this margin from here for this everything margin top from there and then we have this one I think I have added top zero here so this margin is getting from this one from this margin top that we have added here so now we need to add the condition here so I just wanted to have a little bit different design for this one when you just select it okay so now we need to add the this button so when you just click then only we will show this button so how we do it to do so I'm gonna define our boolean instead here so let's import the react or let's import the use state here so i'm gonna add use state here so use state and here i'm gonna do const and then here i'm gonna say open set open so this use state is going to be false by default it's false and here I'm gonna define an arrow function I can say handle click and then I'm gonna define an arrow function here I'm gonna say set open is going to be opposite of this one um, I'm gonna say open alright now we need to uh, add this one here in this icon when user click on this icon we want to open this one so I'm gonna say on click and then this one our function name okay now this open we need to add condition here so this mobile nav is gonna contain everything for our nav bar right so therefore I'm gonna say here I'm gonna add a ternary operator here I'm gonna say open if it's open is true then show this one else show nothing show now so if it is true I want to show this entire div that contains our that contains our uh, nav design else nothing okay you can see we don't have let me refresh it so it should work so now we're in mobile view and we don't have this sidebar okay we don't have this nav bar now let me click on it and here we go we can see our nav bar all right so there is an issue here 
we need to put the margin to keep this one from top and then have this one everything is fine so I think I I was removed this margin from this one so let's put margin top to uh, 10 pixel or let's put 90 pixel then so that we can exactly see what from where this one is coming so now we can see and here you go so exactly this space is coming from here okay if you don't want to have a space so now it's clear that this space is coming from here so i'm gonna put it i'm gonna keep it one pixel So now it's clear that we're getting this space from here and then uh, okay so everything is fine here and for this nav bar and do you have this issue here let me check it again so we don't have this issue here so I think I, we can add a little bit of padding here because we don't have padding here that that is the reason so white color display flex we need to add so uh, in the active class I want to have a little bit of padding I think I, I didn't add this one so when our uh, user is active uh, yeah we have added this padding here also and then uh, we can nav per header padding 5 pixel and then margin top I'm gonna increase this uh, margin top to 20 pixel so this is just the basic design issue and then it's gonna work here now if I do it now click on it here you go so we got this uh, space and still we need to fix few things like the responsive issue and we will do it in our next part and another thing that we can do so our which one our nav per ul ally uh, mobile nav mobile nav ul margin top and this one i'm gonna put it uh put it back to 30 pixel uh, not 30 put it 20 pixel So that we get more space all right so i'm gonna stop this video right here and in the next part we are gonna fix our this responsive issue okay see you in the next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to fix few design issues here all right so the first thing first i want to fix this uh responsive issue when we're in mobile device you can see this kind of is breaking so the reason is that here we have uh added a fixed height so i want to change it dynamically when we're in mobile device and another issue is that i think we need to add a little bit of padding here okay so we're gonna do it in this part so uh, in the nav per mobile view here in the mobile nav which contains everything here everything our design here mobile nav in this mobile uh, nav per mobile view css file i want to have padding from top Padding from top, let's put 10 pixel and padding from bottom, padding from bottom put 10 pixel. And now if we inspect this one and in the mobile view, why it cannot take, why it cannot load fast. So I'm gonna refresh it again. Now open it in mobile view. And I click on it now it looks so better than the previous one okay we can see little space here you go everything is fine our I scroll is gonna select it based on the section I click on it back to top functionalities is also working everything is working perfectly I click on it and gone okay now let's open this about we are gonna use media query for this one so I'm gonna close everything here so now what we have here so in the component 
and the about so if you look at here this is our about section and then this is our about section and here you can see that we have defined the height 500 pixel okay so i want to add a media query here so how we do media query so if you remember that in the sidebar we added this media query okay so i'm going to copy this media query from here put it in about.css just in the bottom and here i'm going to say that maximum white uh, 1000 pixel if 0 to 1000 pixel maximum white then this about section I'm gonna say for this about section for this about section height I'm gonna say auto instead of fixed height if we are between 0 pixel 1 pixel to 1000 pixel then I want to show height auto instead of fixed height okay but in, in, the, in the web view we will have fixed height 500 pixel so this is how we can dynamically change it now i'm in the mobile view and this is our home this is our about section you can see that now we don't have this issue here that we had earlier now we have this work experience this one is responsive we can do hover okay entire mobile website is responsive now we have this tech stack is responsive our button is responsive our this education section is responsive this project section is responsive this one is responsive and then our testimonial section this one is responsive then our contact form is responsive button is responsive I click on it it's working our mobile view our navbar is responsive so we have fixed everything now and let's try in different screen size okay it's still responsive and you can see now we have these three now we will have two this testimonial is also responsive the slick slider and entire website is responsive all right so we have fixed all this design issue now i think we don't have any design issue okay so i found another design issue so this image is not looking good like like this one i think i didn't add a uh, box fit cover for the image so about image image here i need to add object fit it's going to be cover okay now it's gonna look good here you go now it's, it's, it's looking good so everything is fine here we have solved everything and what else is left uh, I can't see anything here now for now and next what we will do next time next we will be doing this theme functionalities dark theme and light theme features so we will continue with from next lecture see you in the next lecture welcome back once again in this part we will try to change our theme color but before that i want to uh, add animation here so we didn't add this animation here for example here we can see it's rotating so that you can learn how to add this kind of animation here so now let's open this uh, home and home.css file i think yes so in the home we have our icon here right so we have our this icon and for this one this is called sun fill icon so here this for this icon i'm gonna give i'm gonna give it a class name and i'm gonna say uh we can say um what i can say we can say sun we can say light color um we're gonna say sun team icon just give it a name and then this one we are gonna rotate okay so open this home.css after this theme change and here i'm gonna call this theme icon theme change icon here and then here uh, we need to add mm, animation okay so before that uh, we can create a separate uh, animation like we're gonna create the animation separately using keyframe and then we're gonna connect it here okay so how we use it we can use keyframe so keyframe now it's asking for an identifier i'm gonna say rotate you can give it or uh, i'm gonna say rotation all right so now here i'm gonna i will have to add from to to okay from when I, it means that from where to where i want to have animation so i want to have animation from uh transform i want to add transform uh zero degree so we need to say rotate zero degree all right and then we are gonna add two not top it should be two and then 
I'm gonna say transform I'm gonna say transform 360 transform the will same we wrote it is going to be 360 degree all right so what we did here keyframes rotation just give it an identification name from to two transform this transform is gonna help us to rotate here we are saying that from zero degrees because initially it is in zero degree okay it's zero degree and then we want to have when we rotate this one one time which is 360 degree okay so uh, we have added here rotate to 360 degree now we can call this one so there is a CSS property called animation and then here it has a lot of functionalities okay it's a lot of props so uh, we don't need all this so we just need rotation uh, which is this name that we have assigned here and the image so we're saying the animation this one and then we want to have it infinite loop because it we want it to continuously rotate and then next we can put the duration which is going to be five seconds we can choose and then I want to give it linear now we should be able to see rotation click on it here you go you can see it's rotated now if you change this one instead of 360 degree let's put it only 60 degree then how then how then what it look you can see it's rotated this way and then again it's gonna return okay so but we want to have it 360 degree cool now we want to change the color okay so when we are in the dark mode we want to have a different color like this color you can see that so this item has a different color and for the entire application background has a different color so I'm gonna copy this color code so I'm gonna just clear on it I'm gonna pick this color code um, this is the color code I think 46045 so I'm gonna copy this color code and in our app.js files now because um, I'm gonna change the entire application background so I'm gonna add app.js file here and here I'm gonna add the color code so I'm gonna say hash dark and then here I'm gonna say background color is going to be this color and I want to give it a color white for the text color is going to be white now maybe you are thinking that from where we are getting this dark remember that in our context API for our theme we were assigned this light and dark you can see ID theme and this theme contains either light or dark based on the uh, based on our choice when we click on it okay we are just changing this one so we have assigned here ID therefore we are using here hash okay now this is our app now I click on it you can see that our inter application has now this black theme color how cool it is okay now we will have to dynamically change this color so we don't want to have this shadow okay we're gonna make changes here don't worry and there is little more space that we are getting we're getting this space from here okay we will uh, decrease the space from here or I think we don't have this space here All right okay we will fix this one so first let's change the mm, color okay well, I mean the background of this one so first I'm gonna change this one okay so now open this about so I'm gonna open this about.css so about and about.css so here in our about section we have we are we are getting this shadow okay so I'm gonna add I'm gonna define the dark theme here I'm gonna say hash dark then the space dot this section name here okay and then here we can define our CSS I'm gonna say just for example here box shadow I'm gonna say box shadow none okay now box shadow should should be removed from our app for this dark one we're in dark mode we don't have this box shadow but I want to add it a background color like this background color this background color okay so I'm gonna pick this color code quickly I'm gonna pick this color code and this is the color code I'm gonna copy this color code and then we will have to add this color code here for about section 
I want to give it a name called background color. I'm going to give this color code. All right. Now in our application, in our about section, we have this background color for this about section. It looks really nice. In our light theme, we have this color and in our dark theme, we have this color. We can also add this uh, kind of shadow here that we have. So in our dark mode, so we are getting the shadow. We use this kind of dark shadow when we hover in our tag item. So I'm going to copy this dark shadow from here. You can use your shadow and then in our dark theme. So we always need to define a dark space, our class name that we want to have a different kind of color in our dark theme, okay, or any kind of design. So now we have this shadow. It looks really nice now. So this is our light theme and this is our dark theme. Cool. We don't need to design, make changes, anything here. Okay, we need to change here one thing because this one is already colorful. We don't want to have any changes here. But if you want, definitely you can do it. But it, we don't need to do it here. But we want to change this color because our this ER color is black and this one is kind of black. So I want to have it white color in dark theme. So how we do it now? So we need to open the work experience and then the dead class is black. So now here I'm gonna define hash dark. So hash dark and then want to have this dead class. And here I am gonna define color is going to be white color. So dark theme color is going to be white. Now it should have white color. So black color in light theme in dark theme it has white color. So everything is fine for this one. Now let's work on this. And as we use the same class name for this education year, it's, then it's it's automatically changed. Okay, so we will not have to make any changes here. Now let's fix this issue in our dark in our take a stock. So in our take a stock. So in our take a stock dot CSS. And so this is our tag content that contains everything. So here I'm going to add this hash and then dark space this tag content. So this tag content and here so dark then this tag content. So this dark and then this tag content and here we need to have a different we need to have background color like this background color that I have added here this background color for this item so I'm gonna copy this background color and I'm gonna put this color here now what we can see we have this background color but we need to change the color of the text so I'm gonna say color is going to be white color so now it has white color in dark mode I want to remove this box shadow rather I want to have the dark box shadow that we have here so I'm going to copy this box shadow. And open this one. Now it looks really nice. Click on it. We have this one and we have this one. Okay. We have this background color and then this dark shadow. All right. So now I think uh, we can also change the hover effect here. Now our hover effect has gone in dark theme because we haven't added any hover effect here. So how we can add the hover effect? I'm going to copy this class name. So dark theme, our content. I'm going to remove all this. And here we can just put hover. And then here we can define the background color when we hover this item in dark mode you can say background color we can say black color just for example and now if i hover this option so now we're in light theme and you can see uh, the color is gonna change here so this is how we can do also hover effect here in our in, in the in the dark theme mode so uh, instead of black maybe i can try something else like this little bit dark Okay, we can keep this one and I'm going to add here uh, this. I'm going to add here this transition duration. So I'm going to add transition 
um, duration maybe one second that we are using here now it looks really smooth so in light mode in dark mode and you can see this chef cool so this way you can just change each and every option now we don't need to make any changes in our education now we need to change our project section so open the project so open the project section here this is the project list and this is the project section so which one contain our everything so this project list is gonna contain everything so i'm gonna add dark and then a space and then this project list so dark this project list so dark and then this project list so dark project list and here i want to have a background color that we are using so this is the background color that we are using in dark mode so i'm gonna keep this background color here and and we need to have border color uh, background color i mean the box shadow this box shadow that we're using here in the dark mode so i'm gonna use this one and we also need to change the color so color i think color is going to be white here and then so here we go i'm gonna click on it now it looks really nice everything is working we have this shadow background color and this color also okay we can we haven't added this one there's a reason we can also hover this one so we have changed this one and now let's change color for this testimonial so in testimonial in dark mode i want to have a different this color so now open this testimonial so this testimonial is here i'm gonna this thing and this so this testimonial so this one is the main color that contains everything this class so i'm gonna copy this class and here i'm gonna put this dark theme so dark and then this one and here now put the background color so this is the background color and then i'm gonna put this color here and then also put the color color is going to be white now we have this now let's see now we have now in the in the dark theme we have this background color okay and another little fix is here we can add this box shadow so i'm gonna copy this dark box shadow from from about.css that we are using so copy this box shadow and then put it in this testimonial and let's see how it looks now we can see this kind of chef all right but we can add a little fixing we'll do it later if it is required all right so this way you can change each and every item so i just wanted to change all this so you you can you can change anything just put the dark before before the class that you have used and then dynamically change this name so now we need to change our design for our uh, contact form okay so for the contact form for the contact form i think we have added little we need to fix this one so in the contact form i'm gonna open this contact form here in this contact form so this is the our main contact form main section of this contact form so i'm gonna copy i'm gonna add background color here so i'm gonna add dark and then put our so i'm gonna keep these two things okay so here i did a mistake so first i added box shadow none i'm gonna remove this one and put it here background color now let's see what we have here so now we have this um we have this kind of shape this kind of background color but 
okay so this contact section bottom 50 pixel that is the error that is the reason that we are getting this uh, color like little space from the bottom we don't need to have this one in the light mode it looks good also okay now we need to change this uh, this one also so for for the dark theme in our contact form we have this this color okay so what can we do here we can we can dynamically change everything here so we can just change the color of this one of the input so in the contact contact from image so this is the class where we can just change okay so i'm gonna copy this one and add dark and then I'm gonna remove all this so now what we need we need to have a background color so what background color we want to have this background color here and then I want to add a border here I want to add a border so I'm gonna say border 2 pixel solid um, yellow I think now you can see that we have now this background color like this one and we have this we can this way we can use different kind of design okay but these two is not working because these two has different kind of design okay so instead of this yellow i can just choose a different color here like little dark i think or maybe green like this so this way you can add new field in dark mode and then you can just do it uh, not this one a little bit lighter so that it at least is visible all right so it looks good now we need to add same thing for these two items so this text area and i'm gonna add hash dark and then or we need to have this class name here and we need to have this kind of design for this text area also so I'm gonna copy this design and I'm gonna put it here and we get this shape and do the same thing for this custom select tag okay so I'm gonna copy this class name here and I'm gonna add hash and then dark which is our dark theme class name and then i'm gonna paste this class name and put this design also here cool and here you go so here we need to change the color as we have this color here text color so i'm gonna change i'm gonna add a color here so this color is going to be white here you go so everything is fine now it looks really nice you can see everything is fine working perfectly and now for this item we can take we can have little margin from this card okay so how we do it let me see the css here so in the contact this one so contract from design is gonna contain everything right so i think we haven't added anything for this contract from design so did you add anything here for this contract form no so I'm gonna say this contact from design and here I'm gonna have margin top I'm gonna say margin top 50 pixel and we should be able to see all this information here you can see this one little margin but for this image we can also take margin top 50 pixel so this image is coming from here so we can say margin top 50 pixel for this image so that it is start from the same position now it's coming from the same position cool everything is fine now let me cross check it again so we have added a different color for each and every item and we have these options here okay cool everything is fine our project is responsive now we still there are some issues we need to fix so how you fix it um, let me inspect this one so in the mobile view i don't want to have i don't want to have this one okay because in mobile view in general we have we always have less space okay 
therefore it is not user friendly to show the show this extra icon here therefore what i will do mainly i will try to add this kind of switch button in our nav bar like this one okay this switch button we will implement in our mobile view to add um to show um, to switch the theme okay so we will do it in our next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to add animation in our application all right so this kind of animation so when you visit our website for so the very first time we are gonna show this kind of animation okay for this one like this animation so for that i'm gonna use a package called react reveal and it's very easy to use so there's a reason that i'm gonna use it you will find a couple of other packages but i really like this one therefore i decided to use this one and you will see they have a little bit of documentation how to use this one it's very easy to use it so let me install it first so just visit this uh, npm react reveal and then install this package and uh, this terminal and in this terminal i'm gonna say cd client and this one and i'm gonna add force so now it is gonna install our package and in the meantime, what can I do? We can read the documentation here. So let's visit their official homepage website. So click on it. And it says that React Reveal is an animation framework for React. It's the MIT license has so this, this, this. Okay, so uh, here we can see this kind of animation effect. Like they have different kind of animation effect. So we can just choose anything. Now I'm going to click on this example. And here you go. So this fed, this, they have these things like um left then the right left top bottom clear big okay these are the effect they have for zoom they have this effect so you can you just how how will you use this one so you can just import this if you want to use this fat effect then just import this fat and then you can just choose left or right and then wrap your component so it's super duper easy to use you can see slide bounce zoom and we can say bottom like you can choose anything here so as let's try so it has installed our package so now we're going to start from our home okay so in our home what we have we have this <laughs> we have this text then we have this two button okay so i want to have a uh, two animation for this one for this text I'm, i want to have one animation for this text text and typewriter effect i want to have one animation and for this button i want to have one animation okay now i'm I, i'm gonna choose this fat one so fat left i'm gonna choose and okay so for that i'm gonna choose this fat copy this one and then just import it here now we need to wrap our component using this fat so this s1 and s3 tag i'm gonna wrap with this one so this one and i'm gonna cut this one here and put it here so here i'm gonna say left i want to have it from left side and now if i refresh it and then it should come from the left side you can see it comes from left side okay and for the button okay so let's put it from the right side because in the left side we already have our side part so i want to have this from right side so now if i refresh this one then this component should come from right side and this one i want to have from bottom so the same fit i'm gonna use but this time we will just change it to bottom so this button class is gonna contain everything so i'm gonna copy this fit and wrap this one and then this time instead of right i'm gonna say bottom so i want to have this one from bottom so now when i refresh this one then this it comes from bottom and this one comes from the right side you can see so it looks really nice or we can choose some other for example they have right top bottom then clear or big 
like they have a couple of options so i have decided to do this one now for this one for this about me flip means like this it do these things flip do these things and rotate look like this this one we'll also use zoom but let's take this fit here so now uh, open this about so in about js yes, i'm gonna import this fit okay and then so what we have in our fit we, we have our this image here and then this one so i'm gonna choose this one uh, we need to import this one so we need to add this one fed and then we are gonna cut this one here so I'm gonna give this one so this this image I want to come from bottom and then and then this column I want to come from right side uh, not this one exactly um, I want to have different animation for this title so I want to have this p tag comes from right side so this way I can just put this fed uh, not this one so I'm gonna copy this fed so this way you can just add your animation for each and every items okay each and every tag and this one I want to have from right side now if I come here you can see it comes our image comes from bottom and our this text comes from comes from right side and this one I want to have different animation let's say the flip one this one I want to have so I'm gonna import this flip for the title so in the about I'm gonna import this flip and then I'm gonna choose this one for this title so I'm gonna have this flip option here and cut it and then put it here cool now we have this flip like this but I want to have this flip from left so I'm gonna say left and I refresh this one I think yes we see this uh, little animation here for this one cool now for work experience we don't need to add any animation because this component that we are using it already has one animation so now for the tag stack okay we will have to add our animation so for the tag stack I'm gonna choose the fed animation so I'm gonna copy this fed animation here and open this tag stack so where is tag stack so in the component we need to open our tag stack here we go so import this tag stack here and then i'm gonna copy this fed now we need to look on it so this is the column that is gonna repeat here so we need to wrap this one with our animation so when i'm gonna say fed so i'm gonna say fed and inside this fed I'm gonna put these things so this fed and inside this fed we have this column and I want to have this animation from right side all right now let's see what we have so now refresh here and as soon as we scroll we should be able to see our item is coming one after another with the animation from the right side so we come here the animation is coming from right side now I click on this load more is coming from the right side click on it is coming from the right side how cool it is and for this education you already have this animation and for the project section I want to have this zoom effect okay from right top bottom and or this one or bounce which one is good light speed or the flip one I think I can choose zoom for this one we didn't use zoom let's use zoom zoom animation for our project section so open this project and um, in the project list okay so in the project list we can use this our our animation 
and then I'm gonna wrap this entire thing like this tip contain everything about the project so I'm gonna wrap this one with a animation called zoom and then I'm gonna put it in the bottom so now we have this cool zoom animation effect okay so now let me refresh it again so our education section and this is our project and it looks really nice and for this testimonial it's already have this one but still we can try to add a um, zoom animation here also so i'm going to copy this import zoom and then open the um the testimonial section and in the testimonial section we can also use this animation so this way if you want you can add animation for each and every component okay uh for our any for our testimonial this div contain everything this div contain everything so i'm gonna add uh this zoom effect here this container then we should let's see if our uh, zoom effect is visible for this testimonial slider yes so it looks really nice so here uh, we can also choose the other animation let me refresh it again and let's see how it looks this project and this animation it has three so it's not visible this way but you can just add this one now we also have this contact so for this contact i want to have this one coming from bottom and this one is coming from right side so for that so so there is an issue here so this one is not selected i didn't notice it so what happened here so i think we remove the size of this one so let's increase the height a little bit more 950 pixel now it's visible okay so in the contact i also want to have i also want to have uh, this fat animation so i'm gonna copy this fat animation where it is this one so copy this fat animation and in this contact form so for the icon for the not icon for the image i want to start it from it i want to come it from bottom and then i'm gonna try it here bottom and then and then and then this column i want to come from right side so i want to add this fit with this one and i'm gonna call it here and I'm gonna say it from right side and let's see so it's coming from bottom and this one should come from right side all right so it's working perfectly even let's say we are in the bottom and let's refresh it and if we are scrolling up then still we should be able to see our animation we go up we see animation we see this animation this one has already animation this one we have animation we have this animation and this animation cool now another thing that we can do here for this one for this lot more button we can also add this animation so in the contact um not contact in the tech stack we have this lot more button somewhere here right in this one this button so here we can add a uh, zoom animation so i'm gonna copy the zoom class here so this zoom zoom is gonna look good here so here we go i'm gonna import it here and then wrap this button here with this zoom effect so i'm gonna cut this one and i'm gonna put it here now we should see this animation this way so now we come here and take a stock here you go and this one is working perfectly 
what happened here. Is there any error? So this load more button. Uh, okay, so there is an error. I think we did something wrong here. And it says that, let me see the console, what it says that, so react.children only expected a receive a single react element child above. So, mm -hmm. so this is the error. So we got this error because we wrap this, uh, this condition with this zoom effect. We can't do it here. So, because at some point we're going to disable this one, then it is not going to get this thing. So we're, we're going to add this one inside this one. Okay. Inside this condition. Now it should not create any error. Now, where it is, click on the load more, load more. And here you go. Now we don't have any error. So everything is fine and let me check it if we got the animation for this zoom button again. So I'm going to refresh this one. Scroll down. Take a stock and this animation is also. So we have added our animation. All right. And it's going to work for dark theme, light theme and, and everywhere. Okay. So far we have added all this design stuff and I'm gonna choose this one scroll this animation is working we will still do a little more fixing later so I'm gonna stop this video right here and we'll continue with it from next lecture see you in the next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to send we will try to create our endpoint to send email all right so we don't need to have this app.get I did it just for example just to show you how it works so I'm gonna remove this one and here we need to add, we need to first uh, add this body parser and this course so that we can convert our data in JSON format. We need to do it, okay, for the configuration. So I'm gonna say f.use and in this app.use, I'm gonna pass this course first, all right, and then this one is connected with our app directory with our express. Now app.use uh, and uh, this one is going to be for uh, um, body parser dot uh, json so body parser dot json and then app dot use body parser dot json and then we need to convert this um, body parser into url and code it so i'm going to say app dot use and this one is going to be body parser dot url and code it url and code it then i'm going to say extended true and then I'm gonna put this one here so app.use is going to be course and app.use is going to be body parser json and then app.use body parser url encoded extended true so these are the basic configuration for this body parser that we need you can also check their um, the website in body parser package like you will get this, this kind of instruction they might have this instruction. You can see this body parser JSON URL encoded. Okay, this is how it works. So now we don't need any all of these. So uh, okay, so now we need to create our endpoint. But before that, let's connect our send grid here. So I'm gonna create a const here. So const we can say transporter. Transporter is this transporter is it's just a name. You can give any name here. So this transporter is going to be equal to our node mailer that we have created the instance of node mailer so this node mailer dot node mailer has one pre-built function called create transport okay and inside this create transport uh, it checks an object inside this create transport we need to pass our send grid transporter that we have created this send grid transporter and this send grid, grid transporter take uh two props one is uh it takes a auth so it takes the auth here so it's gonna be a auth and then this auth in this auth we're gonna pass our um, send grid api so we need to have our send grid what it says actually expected okay what it expected 
uh, okay so I did a mistake here so we don't need to have this bracket here so this create transporter inside this create transporter we need to add send grid transporter and this send grid transporter is gonna take an object like key and value so first one is going to be auth and then inside this auth we need to write api underscore key and then we can write here our api key is going to be process dot env dot our uh, this api key which is api send grid that we have created here this and api send grid so what we did here we created a constant called transporter then saying connecting it with node mailer so this is node mailer so node mailer dot create transporter node mailer contains this function and inside this function we need to pass our send grid transporter and inside this send grid transporter it has these auth functionalities and it takes you can see this auth it takes to it has two properties one is api key which is our key and the value that we want to pass our uh, api key that we have created here which is content api send grid okay so now we have connected this one and this process.env is coming from .env the package that we have installed earlier so using this package we can connect any information that is available inside this env file and then we can just connect it here so this api key and then the process.env then api send great all right so this transporter is ready now now we can create our api so how we do it so app dot post we're gonna have a post request so i'm gonna say post and then i'm gonna have this is going to our endpoint i'm gonna say send email you can give it any name we just need to make sure that after the uh main url we need to put this one this is going to be our endpoint so now we're gonna have request and then response and inside this we're gonna have all of our information so we want to pass how many things we have here so in our app we have name email job types and message these are the four information that we want to send right so therefore i'm gonna create a const and here i'm gonna pass all this information i'm gonna say name email then i'm gonna say job types and then message and all this information we will get from request which is this request so request dot body so in node.js we requested body means any data that we will get from front end we call it body okay so we are going to request this for information from our body means from our front end and then we are going to send this information through this um, endpoint to our back end or to this email address that we are going to use okay now these are the four information that we want to send in our email now here we have added these functionalities to send email this is called transporter now here we can write our transporter here i can say this transporter dot this transporter now contain one function called send mail this send mail is coming from the send grid okay that we have connected here so this send mail and inside this send mail it is gonna take all the information that we want to send to our email so the first prompt thing that it needs it needs to so to which email address i want to send this one i'm gonna say yes for no remember that you need to put the email that you have verified in your send grid account okay in your send grid account the account you have verified here don't use any uh, random uh, email so yes for no at the rate gmail.com so the two email you can use any but the from means the sender sender needs to be verified so you need to use the sender email exactly the same that you have used but you can for two you can use different but i'm gonna keep this one same so then i'm gonna say from from the same email address so from same email address so to to from and then we can now put our subject it has a property called subject we can say here uh, we can say job offer because in our personal portfolio our um, the people will send us email it, it will be related to a uh, job right we can see there's job type and message name email there okay so we can just say any name here for example job offers and then it takes a html property and inside this html property we need to add all of our uh, information 
I mean, it, you can assume it is our email body. Now I'm gonna add here back ticks. Uh, inside this back ticks, we are gonna add our information. So first, I'm gonna I'm gonna put here is five tag. I'm gonna say is five, and I'm gonna say here details information. And after that, I'm gonna add one UL tag, and then one inside this UL, I'm gonna have a list. So this is called unordered list, and then this one is going to be list. And it doesn't provide any suggestion, so you will have to write it manually. So inside this list, you will ally, all right. So inside this you will ally, you will have to write your code. So this one is going to be, we can say, I'm gonna write here a P tag here. Inside this p tag, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say name of the person who will send that we will get from where we will get it from, and we will get it from where we will get it from the body like this name. So I'm gonna put this name here, but and make sure that you have you are using hash in the front. Uh, not hash, it's the dollar symbol. Okay, now it's visible. So name. And then we want to send, we want to take, we want to see their email address as well. Like they will write their email address in the body, and then we will also receive this one. So just take whatever information you are receiving from the person who will contact with you, just send it to your email address. Now I'm gonna copy this one. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say email, and this one is going to be email here, and then I'm gonna copy this one. So, and this one is going to be job types. And this one is going to be job types. And the last one is going to be our message. So copy this one and this one is going to be our message. And instead of job time, the title is going to be message. Okay, so now, if you click here, nothing is going to happen because we didn't current our um, this field with the API. But we can still test this API. How how can we test this API? We can test this API and we can try to send email uh, using Postman. Okay, so if you in case you don't know what is Postman, just simply search on Google Postman. So Postman give us an opportunity to do all those things that we can do from our application. Like you have API ready, you can just send your data. You can do everything using postman okay so if you do, haven't installed node.js yet sorry uh postman yet just simply visit their website and download it and then install it is very easy you don't need to do any kind of configuration just download it and install it like a normal process and then you just need to have an account there and then you can just see this kind of view okay uh, initially you will have like this kind of things you will not have any anything like this okay so here we can just add our api endpoint and we can test our api even we can send email from our postman like whatever things you can do from your website you can do the same thing with your api from this postman so there's a reason that people use postman so that they can test their api and the front end team is gonna do the front end stuff so uh, how we do it like this is the url we have right not this one like this is our port number so i'm gonna copy this one and so like change this url to post and here post this one okay here you can see that like they have couple of a uh, method post method get method put paste delete copy hard link etc okay so this is going to be a post method because here we're going to post something and you can see that we have written here post and then our endpoint is going to be this sent mail and this one is our main url like http localhost this is our port number after this port number we have these things called this one okay now and if you are doing it for the first time then in the headers okay make sure that you have checked in these two things one is accept one is accept encoding okay like this content these are the things that you need to check in because otherwise sometimes it it, it will give you an error it won't it will say that it won't be able to convert your data and now this is our body you don't need to do anything here and this is our body in this body we will just generate in this body you will see they have a couple of options none firm data and then url encoded raw data 
and then binary GraphQL and all this like in raw data if you are selecting raw data then here you need to select it in JSON because we are gonna send JSON data by default it's selected I think text if it is text then you won't be able to see the result here so you need to send it select it JSON now here how we write this information we write it in this way so in the body we we'll say uh, we have our field called name exactly these are the thing these are the field that we need to write here and this is our endpoint so we need to say name here and it should be in the bracket and then here you can say the message we can say Johnson so Johnson is gonna contact with us and then the email here well we have the email so this is the field name now I'm gonna put this name here email and I'm gonna just write a random email dot com like the user email now before we send this one we should run our server because we haven't run it yet so we can see that we we made some changes now we need to run it I'm gonna say note app dot js now it should okay we need to close the previous server and then run it not app dot js now we can see server is connected now we will be able to send this one okay now uh, we can do one thing if successfully we send the message then we want to okay let's do it if successfully we send the message then here uh, after this st i mean inside this transporter uh, after this back ticks we can send a json, JSON message we can say response dot json and here we can send the information that we are sending we can say okay so not here we can't do it here we need to put it like i mean after this transporter here because we are doing this uh, response for this one we can say we can add here a message here uh, for example or we can just pass this two things that we are sending name and email and then if it's success then we will be able to see it here now again we need to run it because we made some changes so I'm gonna run it here so I'm gonna say not then app.js server connected now this is our post method and now let's hit this button here you go we got this JSON format called name Johnson and email JSON j at the gmail.com and we can see the status 200 it means that we have successfully sent our email now if I open my email address hopefully I will be able to see uh, hopefully I will be able to see the email hopefully I got the email and let's see here you go we can see job offer this is the subject I am gonna open this one I look saves and name is Johnson email is j at the gmail.com job types is undefined message is undefined because we send these two information from our code but we haven't added it in this one okay so there's a reason it's um, is undefined so now how can we prevent this kind of issue we can add validation so that we can make sure that user must edit all the fields okay so to do so the reason that um, now here we can add the validation how we add the validation here uh, here we can add the validation in this way for example okay before that let okay we will do it so here we need to write if condition we can say if not equal to name this symbol and then our this field name if user haven't added any name then we're going to send them error message and then error message we write it called return so return response dot status this status is going to be 400 so return response status dot json and then here I'm gonna say a um, message called error and here we can say so this one is the thing this one is the key you can say this one key and it's value so these are the thing that we will access from our front end to show this message okay not only we are showing this message in the back end, we will also show a toast message in the front end part so the user exactly know that they need to add all this field. So here I can say, uh, we can say, please add your, please add your name. Okay. Now on this way, 
uh, response to the status 400 and JSON uh, this this way we need to add this condition for all this field so I'm gonna copy this one and then this one is going to be for email I'm gonna copy this one and then this one is for job types and then copy this one and this one is going to be for messages and for this one uh, we need to add the um, change the message also so please add your email and then this one is going to be job types please add job types just job types and then the message okay now and in the response instead of passing these two fields I can simply send a message here like the success message I can say success if it's successfully done then we're gonna send your email has been sent successfully your message has been sent just send this one okay now if I run this one now kill this previous server and then run this one I'm gonna say node app dot js all right server connected now we have everything here like two field now we should see one error message like from the validation so I have added name and email now if I hit the send button then it says that please add your job types it means that our validation is working right how cool it is it's very easy to do it please add your job types so now I'm gonna add the job types here so I'm gonna add the job types and I'm gonna say full time so now if I click on it now it says this please add your message okay so now we can add the message here and I'm gonna add message here so I can say I am looking for a react.js developer all right now uh, let's change the name here so, so Johnson I'm gonna say David this time and this one is going to be david at the gmail.com now if I send this one then we should see the success message you can see success your email has been sent the success message and its status score is 200 now if I open email address and I got one more email called job offers and here you go name david email david at the gmail.com job times full time and message I'm looking for a react just developer all right how cool it is okay so now you have learned how to send email from our postman and we have prepared our api now we need to connect this api endpoint this endpoint in our front end so you we are going to do it in our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to so now we can send email from our react application right but we need to show a toast message so for that i'm going to use react toastify package so search npm react toastify and then you will be able to see this package so first I'm gonna install this package and then I'm gonna install it in our react application so cd client and then I'm gonna install this one I'm gonna say force uh, okay so I did a mistake here so it is not gonna work I think okay so it worked it didn't take the last one uh, I'm surprised so let's do it again so force so react toastify force i think it's already installed right yeah it, it 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 has installed successfully now let's read their documentation it's very easy to use so they have these features we need to import this react toastify and then we need to import this react toastify these things okay so let's import these two things first these are the two things that we need to import so i'm gonna import uh, these two things here and then we need to connect this toast container that contains everything so this toast container we need to con connect in our uh, inside our return inside our div okay so I'm gonna do it in, out inside this container okay here so I'm gonna put this toast container and here we can add some properties here like the auto close 
after 800 millisecond you can just increase or decrease the duration here like uh, we want to close the toast after this millisecond automatically okay if you don't want you can just avoid this one so just put auto close here you can see in this toast container we need to add now we can read their documentation like in the home page just go to this home page and then you should be where is their home page uh, check the documentation to get you started so like yeah this is their home page and here you can see that like they have different kind of option top left top right then light dark you can just show toast this way in the right side this way you can just see okay the code and these are the code that we need to use okay so this is the toast and this toast message they have video message everything so we're gonna write it here so now in our where it is so here so in this result dot error and this error is about this error where that we added our for validation we can access this information using this error so result dot error if there is an error so we're gonna say we're gonna send our error message using the toast uh, that we have just installed so we're gonna say toast dot error and this error is a property and this error property is a property from this toast package okay it will means like it will it will generate a red color toast message and here we want to we need to pass the message what message we want to pass we want to pass result dot error because this result dot error now contain each and every options okay so I'm gonna say toast dot error is going to be result dot error that contains our message and here we can add the position where we want to show we can say position of our toast I'm gonna to say toast dot position I'm gonna say it top right you can say top right bottom right soft sensor I'm gonna say top right okay so if there is an error we want to show the error here okay now let's see if it is working or we need to add the CSS field for this so I'm gonna refresh this app now if I click on it and here you go see the magic please add your name this one is coming in our post message okay so you can just customize this one like you can use this kind of close on click post hover and draggable like let's put this and draggable true okay now if we put this draggable true then what can we see now i can drag the anything is not working here like uh, you can just choose this one like toast this position draggable I don't know exactly what it does but you can just say process undefined draggable and draggable should work for this one. let me save this one position true draggable true right draggable means it should be in draggable right so let me try again so now click on it okay we can click on it and then it's gonna go on okay now okay whatever the the purpose they have we can just use it and then they have the process undefined position top right auto close 500 height progress bar false so let's use this one height progress bar I think this progress bar will show height our this progress option like like this one or I think we should add it Ah, okay so we need to add this one here not here exactly we should add this one in the container we're just passing it in the toast reader not here I'm sorry for that I think we should put it in this container so now if we add this draggable now if I save it now I think but it's still it's not working so I'm gonna click on it yeah you can see now this draggable view I think this one this is what this is the purpose all right so this way you can use this one now or let me click on it so this is our name so I am gonna write the name and now if I click on it then it says this please add your email uh, okay there is an issue here I found so if I'm gonna click if I click on it it's gonna always clean the state but we should do it if it is success okay if it's success then only I should clean the state so we need to make changes in the 
code okay uh, what can we do so if result dot error then we're gonna show the message else if there isn't any error right the else means here so I'm gonna say else so if we found error there then we're gonna show this message right if there is an error that if there is an error we're gonna show this test message toast message right if there isn't any error it means that we can successfully send it then we want to clean our state now we can put this one in this else block now it says that name I'm gonna write the name now we can see our state is not clean because um, there is an there is an error still and if it, there is an error then we're not gonna clean our state if it it success then only will clean our state and it says that please add your email now it says please add your job types I'm gonna choose job types now it says please add your message so I'm gonna add this message now if I click then we should be able to get our email address get an email click on it everything is cleaned and we we don't have any toast message because we haven't added it now I come here refresh it and we got this message we got this email you can see this information so it's working now we need to add success toast message for the success toast message here I can put success toast message so this I'm gonna copy this toast error and it, they have another property called success success and instead of this error I'm gonna write here a success message you can say your email has been sent now let's see if it is working so we got this error let's write some name and click on it let it close and click on it and we can see your email has been sent this is the success message okay so this is how we can access our success email and we got an email here as well cool now create a uh, like with a new with a, with a full name we can say frank an email is going to be i'm sorry i'm frank frank at the rate gmail.com and then i'm gonna put part-time hi i have a job offer for you i have a job offer offer for you and your email has been sent now come here refresh the email and here you go you can see name frank part-time hi i have a job offer for you cool so everything is perfect here now you can see our application is working we are able to send email even we can send email from our mobile version as well because the same thing is gonna work let's give a try so open the mobile view and instead of a scroll why don't we click on this contract okay this is our contact form now if I click on it without adding anything and we should be able to see a toast message here you can see this is our toast message we can see here now I'm gonna write here working student and click on it and your email has been sent success message and cool this is our email that we just sent from our mobile version all right so everything is fine let me see if there is anything missing here or any fixes that is required uh, everything is working perfectly now it's time to deploy our project so in our next part we will try to deploy our project all right okay so one thing that is uh required okay we will fix it in the next part see you in the next lecture uh welcome back once again in this part we will try to deploy our project to netlify all right but before that i want to have a little fix here so if i click on it it should come here in the in this one in this field in this contact form okay like the way we are doing it so we can just quickly add this one it's the same features so i'm gonna open this um client folder and then this component so we have this one in our home right and how we connect our sidebar like this uh scroll link we need to import this one this link from react scroll so i'm gonna copy this react scroll and then i'm gonna put it here in our home and then when user click on this um, hire me button this link like this hire me we want to we want to show we want to send them to the contact page so what we have for this contact 
contact me id uh where is it so about like at the bottom i think so this is for contact right this link so i'm gonna copy this link like the same way we did for our um and then we need to have one ending tag here so this is our id and when user click on this hire me button we're gonna send them to this page to this section actually so i'm gonna in home page now click on this hire me and cool now i'm in the contact section this is what i wanted to do all right so now click on it so it's only in the tag so let's try to do it for the button for the entire div and if it doesn't break any if it doesn't break any design issue then we will do it yeah it is working now refresh this one and let's see so now i click on this button anywhere in this button we can access this one so what i did here i just added this entire div that contains our hire me button wrapped with this link that contain our section id all right so these are the few fixes that i noticed and i think everything is fine here uh, we don't have anything to change so let me recheck it again and these things dynamic color we have different color different options it's perfect different options different color for different items everything is working perfectly all right and the toast message cool so now we can deploy our project so to deploy our project we need to i'm going to deploy this project into netlify because it's very easy to do it you will be surprised by seeing how easy it is so just have an account in uh, netlify so just sign up maybe if you have a github account then you can just sign up using github or you can just do it using um, email and password you can see that they have option to sign up or log in using github gitlab by bucket email so i'm gonna do it using my github i already logged into my github account so it's gonna just take me to the dashboard so as soon as you log in you will be able to see this kind of dashboard but if you are new for the first time if you are doing then you may not have anything here so then you will see just a blank screen and from here you will be able to uh, deploy the project so for that first we need to build our react chess project so we need to build our react project okay we don't need to build our node chess because we can't build our node chess because it's a different thing so we are gonna deploy our react project okay one thing i've noticed in this index html let's change the name here like the title so instead of react app we can say uh, portfolio portfolio so portfolio so we can just call it portfolio okay so portfolio in the title bar it's gonna show we can call it portfolio website okay just little fix all right so now inside this client folder uh like this client folder we need to build because this client inside this client folder we have our react.js application and we will have to build our react.js application right so how we do it so i'm gonna stay in this uh, client folder so cd client so because this folder contains our all of our um react.js code now here we are gonna build our project okay here it will generate our build folder so i'm gonna say npm run build now hit enter now it is gonna build our entire react.js application in one single file and then we will have to deploy that file to netlify you can see it is gonna generate a build folder now inside this build folder we are gonna have all of our code that we have written okay everything is gonna combine in this build directory okay it's gonna build everything in this folder now we will just have to drag this file in our netlify okay now you are in here you can just explore it when you can see this this is called sites you go to the sites and here you will be able to see an option called want to deploy a new site if you are new you will not have all this but here if you are here you can see that i want to deploy a new site without connecting to git drag and drop your site output folder here 
okay we can just drag our build folder here then it is gonna deploy for us we will not have to do anything so now uh, it takes some time to build the entire application it depends on number of files so number of lines of code that you have uh, added but let's see I hope that it will not take much more because it's already created the build folder and in the meantime we can just explore our application if we found any error here so everything is working here perfectly very smoothly no issues so far at least I can't see all right so now uh, we can try to do is this one it's looking good or I think we can change the color to white uh, we will do it in the second version in the update version so I'm gonna also show you how can we update this one so it's gonna take some time still and so we have our about this is working perfectly work experience our tech stock education and then the pro projects testimonial and then the contact cool and uh, let me see here it goes so I think it has finished the build process so now I'm gonna just track this build file here so we can't drag this one from this VS code so therefore I'm gonna I'm gonna open the folder directory so you can see uh, this is my folder directory inside this client folder like where you have uh, uh, stored your project just go to this folder directory like this one for client this is our folder then then this build I'm gonna just drag this build from this folder directory and then I can just drop it here and it says that uploading now it is gonna upload our project we will not have to do anything here at this point it is gonna automatically upload and deploy how easy it is so it's gonna take a couple of seconds sometimes it takes minutes I think it depends on the internet speed or the number of files we have so let's see how long does it take so it says deploying your site you can also set up your domain you can add they have so many functionalities and so here you go finish production published no error and this is our application link it by default is generate a random link but we will we can change this name later so now I'm gonna open this one here and personal website cool we can see our website is now live how easy it is now scroll down everything is fine everything is fine cool now if I hover over this one this one is working also our contact form now if I click on it we can see this please add your name we can send email from here okay and then like, this one is mark also and this one is sidebar and this one is dropped out this one is back to top button everything is perfect now we can change our site name okay so how we do it so click on this like by default it will generate a random name so you can simply click on the site setting and in the site setting you will be able to see change site name so click on the site name and here you give your name so let's say we can say a react portfolio so react portfolio let's save it it says this site name is already taken so we can say um, personal we can say portfolio portfolio hyphen two two okay hope uh, nobody has taken this one this name is already taken how it's possible so one one this one is already taken oh no so portfolio react app and then put double two all right now this name has not been taken so now this is our custom name portfolio a website for a app now we can see these things now copy this URL and you can access it from anywhere like I'm gonna open it in different browser I run it here and and here we can see this project animation 
animation lot more button pagination these things coming here testimonial everything is working perfectly click on it we can see these things now if I inspect this one if I in the mobile view here I think we can't see these things in browser in this oh, okay I need to click it here so this is the mobile view everything is perfectly working here in the mobile view also cool so now the thing that I wanted to check here is that now if I click on this get resume then here you go it is gonna open our resume my resume here so user can just click on it and then they can visit your they can see your resume everything is working perfectly and cool so now let me show you how can we update this one maybe after deploying your site you want to update you want to deploy it again right so how will you do it for that first let's change try to change few things here so I want to change I want to have a different color so I want to have a different color for this one and in the component in the home and in home.css in the home.css we have a resume button color black so if we write it white how will it look let's see white color and refresh it and we should see a white color here so this color is looking good, really great so I want to have white color here get resume button okay so now this is the thing and then uh, and then another thing is that so open this about not here so I'm gonna copy this mouse because I just noticed that um, in our scroll bar and that open it open app.css we just added uh, okay so uh, let's see I wanted to see that if they have option for uh, Mozilla with Mozilla uh, uh, scroll bar so like the Mozilla website I can say more selection but they don't have this property here this way okay we will not do it in here all right so now we have updated our project okay so we have updated our project now we can we have updated our project right now what can we do we can uh, we can we can check it uh, we can down deploy it so we made little changes and then I'm gonna uh, we after making any changes we need to build it again so I'm gonna say CD client and now I'm gonna say npm run build so again it is gonna build and then we will have to deploy it here so like they have an option here so now if you look at here in the home then you will see that it color is black once we will deploy it the color will have a white now this is our site where we deploy it right now inside this site you will be able to see an option called deploys and here it says that need to update your website make sure that you are inside this one okay like this is your main project that you have created like this one if I refresh this one it should be changed the name should be changed of the of the app so paste not found what what is what is it so yeah this is true because this url doesn't exist anymore because we made changes so now um in the dashboard so just stay in the uh, dashboard okay so the this is the team overview and portfolio react app this is the site that we have deployed so just stay in this project portfolio react application then you will be able to see an option called deploys and in this deploy it says that need to update your site so here we need to add our updated build folder so it has uh, finished the build process again I'm gonna I'm gonna drag this build folder here and then I'm gonna put it here and then it's gonna upload again it says that uploading 
and again it will take a couple of seconds so it has published now if I click on this one then we should be able to see the new changes we can see the color has been changed and it's get resume now now in the Mozilla browser Mozilla, if I refresh it then here we should also be able to see this white color how cool it is um, so now you have learned how to deploy project to Netlify and you can you have also learned how to change it how to update the project and again redeploy it all right so i'm gonna stop this video right here